Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to my 2024 TED Talk. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the sustainable jewelry revolution and why you all as consumers should buy sustainable jewelry. So to start off, I wanted to ask you all a question. Um, could you please raise your hand if you ever bought in or been given a piece of quote unquote fine jewelry? Now keep that hand raised if you know that this piece was sustainably made. Okay, now if you put your hand down, that is totally okay, and I want you to know that it is harder than most people think to buy a piece of sust sustainable jewelry. And as a society as a whole, we are slowly getting there. Um, it is estimated that by 2025, 20 to 30% of all fine jewelry will be sustainable. However, these are pretty good numbers, but I think we can do better. Who in this room is worried about global warming? Now what about environmental destruction or even the increasing amount of trash in our landfills? Now all three of these things are the extreme results of our human behavior and the industries that we have created to sustain ourselves. This includes both the jewelry industry and the mining industry. Now I kind of took my anxiety about the state of the world and my love of jewelry and combined them into this research question which is, how can shifting consumer habits support sustainable business practices to combat the negative socio-environmental effects of the jewelry industry? Now, through my research, I found that the answer to this question is pretty simple. Consumer habits across the board are shifting towards sustainability. This is across all industries. I found that the jewelry industry specifically follows the trends found in larger industries. Um, these this shift in consumer habits pushes businesses directly to adopt sustainable business practices. Those business practices then in turn help to mitigate the negative socio-environmental effects that we are seeing. So this question ended up being a little bit more simple than I thought. It's kind of a cause and effect of any business. A consumer wants something new, so the business better produce that. Um, however, I found that in order to create real lasting change in the jewelry industry, sustainability should not be a choice, it should become the norm. Now, I wanna go back to some of the negative social and environmental effects and go a bit deeper into them for you guys. So, to start off, the jewelry industry is, oh gosh, I don't know what that is, is 100% reliant on the mining industry for gold, silver, gemstones, diamonds, all of the above. And many of the negative social effects that we see comes from the mining industry. And this includes child labor with, no, with little to no pay, putting children and any miners in harmful work conditions um, that are, that's also very dangerous with little to no safety regulations. Um, and this increases the vulnerability of our miners to get sick, to be injured while working in the mines, and to um, retain diseases that can be long-lasting their whole lives. And this also, the increase in child labor has also caused a decrease in school attendance um, in mining countries, especially Ghana and Tanzania. Now, some of the negative environmental impacts of the jewelry industry, once again with emphasis on the mining industry, um, is number one, the insane destruction of land. Mining takes lots of, well, it destroys the land a bunch, um, and this causes the destruction of ecosystems, this, this causes increased soil erosion, which then causes increased water pollution. We see increased runoff from mines, which is toxic to the environment. Um, and in addition, jewelry is not decomposable. So if you throw a huge bag of jewelry into the landfill, it is actually going to heat up and retain that heat over time, which then increases the heat of the entire landfill, which then increases the production of toxic fumes into the air, um, which can increase global warming. So in order to eliminate these negative social and environmental effects, the jewelry industry needs to turn towards sustainability. Now, I've been talking a lot about sustainability, but I haven't yet given you a de definition. So my definition of sustainability is our generation's ability to meet our current needs while ensuring that the next generation can also meet their needs. Um, and in the whole scheme of the jewelry industry, I need to, I need 
needed to find a term to use that encapsulated both sustainability and the social problems that were going on. And so I found the term social responsibility, which encapsulates both the ideas of sustainability, like mine reclamation, um, as well as the ideas of fair trade, like fair wages and treating your employees fairly. Now, in the jewelry industry, being a, sustainable, a socially responsible jeweler can look like using recycled and fair mined gems. Whenever you are using a mineral or a gemstone, you make sure that you can trace that back to the mine and ensure that it is sustainably mined. Um, creating low waste design so that you are making sure that the least amount of your product is going back into the landfill and also only producing as many products as you are selling so you are not overproducing in any sort of way. Now the reasons companies are still not sustainable is because they want to make max profit using the minimal amount of money inputted into the product. So they do that by outsourcing labor and finding the cheapest raw materials possible um, to maximize their profit. Now, this is all good and well for the business. However, they need to take into account that 78% of their consumers agree that sustainability is important, and 68% of them have already adopted greener buying habits. In addition, a fun little fact I found is that ages 25 to 45 actually prefer buying sustainable because it brings them happiness. Um, an example of a business who should have maybe known about these st statistics sooner or been kind of more in the know and should have made changes sooner is Pandora. Now, a little while ago, Pandora had a wave of criticism from their customers about the um, horrible working conditions and the intense environmental impacts that was going on in the mines that they were sourcing their diamonds from. Pandora is mostly known for their diamond jewelry. Um, now, they needed to make a big change, and so that was shifting completely from naturally mined diamonds to lab sourced diamonds. This completely took out the mining process completely. Um, and if you're wondering about this kind of ad, they went from diamonds are forever, obvious, to diamonds are for all who dream. And I believe they did this because when they switched to lab diamonds, lab diamonds are 30 to 50% cheaper than mined diamonds. So they were able to open their consumer market to a larger range of people, and I believe that is why they changed that ad there. Um, now, after they shift, Pandora's full year sales increased 5%, and their stock went up 3.7%, just because of this sustainable switch. Um, and what is also super interesting is their product prices actually dropped. So they had increased profits, decreased product prices, an increased range of consumers to sell to. And that is why they saw an increase in profit around the board. Now, a common misconception is that sustainability is super expensive, and that is just not true. Sustainability can actually be way less expensive than traditional ways of doing business or whatever you're doing. Um, in my research, I specifically found that this was common in diamonds, especially lab-made diamonds. Now, lab-made diamonds were first created by Tracy Hall, Sadly, this is not a girl's name. When I first read it, I thought it was. This is a man. Uh, but in 1954, Tracy and his team found that you can turn any organic material that contains carbon into a diamond using this machine that is called a belt press, which mimics what happens in the mantle layer of the crust of the earth over billions of years to create a diamond. Intense pressure and heat is applied to the organic material. And after only six to 10 weeks, a diamond is produced. So this is why a, a lab-made diamond can be 30 to 50% cheaper. Um, and as you can see here, a bunch of belt presses working at one time can create a large amount of diamonds at once. Now, here's an example of a naturally mined diamond versus a man-made diamond. These are almost identical. Um, you can actually think that the lab-made diamond is quote-unquote more perfect. Um, because it was made with perfect conditions. Um, and there is a $4,320 price difference between these two, and they are identical. Another example is from two different brands. Brilliant Earth is a sustainable brand, and Jared is a non-sustainable brand. Um, Brilliant Earth uses lab-made diamonds, and there is a $750 price difference here, and in my opinion, the sustainable option is actually way more attractive. 
I also wanted to give you guys an example that did not include lab made diamonds. So this is a loose sapphire necklace with 18 karat white gold. They are almost identical. And there's a $2,000 price difference, $2,000 price difference here. Once again, from Brilliant Earth, which has the sustainable sustainability certifications and diamondsdust.com, which does not. Now, those three examples kind of prove that sustainability can be cheaper. And I wanted to give you a list of traceability certifications and sustainability certifications to look out for as a consumer when you are trying to buy sustainable jewelry. Now, some of the brands that you might already buy from might be sustainable and you just don't know. So when you are online shopping, if the brand does not put it right in your face that they are sustainable when you open up the tab, you can usually find these certifications at the bottom of the website. Um, and I am sorry that I'm asking you as the consumers to take in this large list of random acronyms. Um, and I'm asking you guys to be the change here because businesses do not have to be responsible for themselves. And policy and regulations from regional, national, and international levels to try to mitigate the issues caused by the jewelry industry have failed. And so now it has come up to the consumer to make the conscious choice. Now, there are many examples of failed policy um, that has occurred in the jewelry industry. One example that I found that is pretty easy to talk about is um, the EPA or the EPA in Ghana. Now, this was enacted in 1994 under the United States Environmental Protection Agency with the goal to protect Ghana's environment. Now, they had a yearly budget of $6.3 billion to put into environmental protection, specifically around the mining sites that we're seeing lots of land degradation. Um, and through my research, I found that there has been little to no positive change in the environmental degradation in Ghana since the EPA was enacted in 1994. Now, I found that this is because the EPA was unable to wield its regulatory power amongst the governances in Ghana, and therefore the policies existed, they did, but the policy makers were either not implementing them at all or implementing them so poorly that there was little to no change. And this, ex this is an example of policy failures that have happened in many other countries around the world connected to mining and jewelry. Um, and just an example of kind of like, as a consumer, we should know that this is happening and that we cannot trust our policymakers to fix this issue for us. And so this takes me to my call to action. For you as consumers, please make conscious decisions to support sustainable jewelry and be an advocate for a more socially responsible jewelry industry. And as for jewelry businesses, they should give sustainability a chance and become part of this growing revolution that I think is going to take over the world. Thank you.